All right, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is the before and the after. Okay, so I have two sequences here. Um, this one is the before, and you're going to see a little bit of the dust on there, so you can kind of also get a, a sense of what the footage looked like before the dust busting, as well as the the uh, VFX sequence that involves a gunshot and um, uh, the debris that, that comes off the tree. Um, this is the before. Now, what you would normally have, and this is something that we had uh, planned, it was actually in the storyboard and planning for production, um, to make more clear what's going on in between these two shots where guy A um, fires the gun, before you get the reaction, you would have a bullet hitting this tree or something around the character so you understand the bullet missed. I actually booked a special effects guy to come out on the day and rig up a tree and blow it. We were going to film that and just basically, you know, do it live, as they say. Uh, because we were behind schedule, we decided to, to do it a way that really should be acceptable. Um, the heyday of independent film was the 90s and it bled into the 2000s a little bit. And it was common for you to see a sequence like this where obviously you didn't get enough coverage. Um, meaning you didn't shoot enough, you didn't get enough shots on the day. And you know, we were funding film filmmaking on credit cards, which sounds crazy. That's uh, the only resource that we had to kind of get started in the industry. The people in the early 90s were breaking rules um, doing this before I came along and got into film school. And you know, Hollywood studios said, this is ridiculous, nobody's gonna watch this, there's no market for it. There was a huge market for it. And so <clears throat> you see that a lot in um, films of that era and a little bit today too. So the thinking was, okay, it's gonna be fine. I don't need that shot. Um, but things have changed a lot and a lot of productions are shooting digital now where it's not that expensive to get extra coverage. Um, so I was kind of worried about how the film might be accepted if I didn't you know, uh, punch things up a little bit with some visual effects. Let me, with all that, um, let me show you the after. Here we are in the, uh, the sequence that has everything in it, dust busting and visual effects and all that. So, uh, all right, here we go. All right, so you see we went in in post-production and added that shot of the close-up of the tree bullet hitting it. Um, and then we added, you see you have the muzzle flash there. Mariah did that. It looks great. Um, and there's a way to do that live. It's uh, You use a, a blank that's specifically designed for... Um, for movies. It has a large flash, the flash burns for a long time so the camera picks it up. But we just used the blanks that we had access to and those were just standard like starter pistol blanks and so you didn't get the big flash and it, it looked kind of goofy. So we just added this in post. Um, okay now this is the shot that we created in post. There's a little bit of work left to do. Um, I've got to remove this part uh, although it's only for one frame and honestly when you play it back in full full speed you can't see it but um, so there's two layers here uh, we added and this is stuff that was shot um, in when I went out to East Texas to film the elements that were going to be used in the the VFX sequence these are the elements that I that I shot uh, in front of the green screen and you can see the green screen has been made to be transparent mostly we got a little thing down here to, to worry about and this which is masked that's the actual tree that was in the the f foreground this is this this right here is the the rear plate the uh, background plate and these two elements are foreground and this tree is also foreground i just didn't mask it out all the way um, uh, so that's supposed to be what you get 
And it is actually what you get when you when you shoot when a bullet hits a tree because that's what I filmed um, on the day. So it's it's and I think it looks pretty realistic. Um, now this is the shot. The masking on this one was much more straightforward. When I got to this shot, the masking, which means uh, this foreground effect right here, it's supposed to look like it's behind the character, but it isn't because everything's flat, it, meaning there aren't really layers. Um, the, the character here is part of the the trees that's all one layer it's flat so how are you going to insert if you didn't shoot it on the day how are you going to get the smoke and the dust behind the guy well you can't but you can fake it so that it looks like you did and you can see right here around the hair the dust stops um, and then later in this shot you see right there around the arm around the elbow and the sleeve you can see the dust stops there's a little gap and I probably need to adjust that uh, that mask a little better so that it's a little tighter um, I've been to seminars where uh, uh, VFX experts who work on blockbuster films have shown some of their work and when you play it back frame by frame step by step you obviously see the effect in there you see what they did but when you play it back in full uh, uh, full motion uh, in real time, you can't tell. So that's actually fine. Now the thing that does not look realistic in this shot is foreground dirt just kind of hangs there even though the camera pans off to the left. Um, and that's not natural. You know, if dust were in the air as you pan down the dust would stay where it is and it so it basically go off the camera to the right so that's what we call animating an effect and so I still have to animate that so it looks more realistic um, and then once that's done I'll play it back and see if it looks good there's a possibility that I might need to look over the foreground footage again and get something that's a little more explosive that that um, um, kind of matches the motion from the shot before it this motion right here it starts on the right and explodes out to the left so to do a match move here on the visual effects foreground plate it would help to have it continue at a slower pace because it started to dissipate by now um, to have it explode out a little bit uh, so that's something that um, that's actually the next step to animate that and then at the end of this shot he stands back up and right here as the camera pans back over it would be logical for there to be a very diffuse uh, cloud of dust it's still there and then just to match the whole sequence at the end we need to add a little cloud right here that would be you know very diffuse not much going on in this shot so this should be a very easy one and then again we cut we cut back to him here and possibly the same thing you would have uh, a little very minor dust cloud just just to sell the shot the sequence yes yeah, so when we play it again here's the before and then it goes straight to the reaction compared with the VFX version all right so I think it works I think it really helps the uh, the sequence you know uh, what you want to what you want to avoid is doing something that will allow the or cause the viewers attention to kind of leave the story world um, takes you out of the story so I think by adding in that effect uh, it's gonna help yeah the workflow that's the last thing I wanted to talk about let's take a quick look at a um, effects tree okay so there's a lot going on here and I had to build this from scratch this, all these are individual effects and they all do different things okay now this is the fusion page that's where a lot of the effects happen there are certain effects that don't work on the fusion page 
this is part of the compatibility issue that I ran into. Some of them work down here on the edit page and here in the color page, but not in the fusion, fusion page. And some of them are vice versa. So trying to get certain effects that you need to combine with other effects, that's what was the killer. Doing tutorials, going to the forums, there, and even asking people support, people who designed the software, without really being in here in your studio working on it with you, they can't tell you how to do it. They can suggest, do it this, try this, this, and this. And then you can say, you know, I tried that, I tried that, it didn't work, there's a compatibility issue here. You try different people, different forums, move around, try every resource you can, and eventually you get a new suggestion and you figure out how to go about doing what you're trying to do. Because what you're trying to do is different than what everybody else is trying to do. It, it takes forever, it seems, to become competent and to get one little sequence completed but it takes so much work to get there. Um, you now have a new, uh, a new skill that you can use uh, and bring forward into to future productions. And so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, just wanted to show you what I'm working on with the effects. I know it's been, it's been uh, almost, I guess it's been a month and a half or more since the last update. Also, I was moving over the last couple of weeks so that's one of the things that kind of slowed us down and now that I'm all moved in and settled um, I'm back at work which is why you're getting this this video I'm gonna resume the uh, effects work and get this sequence finished up and uh, stay cool out there come up come up you're gonna help me edit good job we're almost done